Yeah, no guesses for, you know, where I am and what I am about to do. So yeah, people to interview, games to play. See you later. On our quest to finding games from places where normally people wouldn't look into, we are actually going all the way to Croatia, or better said, actually Croatia is coming all the way here in the shape of Interhuman Studios, Damir and Rats Within Walls, which, Damir, it looks absolutely amazing. Thank but you. Before we go into um, what the game is all about, tell me a little bit about Interhuman Studios. How, how does it get started? Well, it started uh, officially, started two years ago, okay. when we opened the company for this. But uh, unofficially, I started about four years ago with the first projects, mm -hmm. with learning, with studying, with research. And then about two years ago, we decided to make it serious, to start making games for the public, not just for ourselves. Okay. And uh, to make an attempt to make a complete board game. Is this uh, is uh, Rot Within the Walls the first game that you're commercially yes. made available. Yes. How has the experience been of going from I want to make a game to actually I am going to make a game and making it? It was an amazing adventure, to be <laughs> honest. So many things to learn, mm -hmm. so many things to unlearn, to find out uh, all about production, financing, the legal parts, certification. And that's all without starting making the game. Okay. Then uh, with the play testing, with all the researchers, with uh, how to call in mechanics, how to properly name things inside the game, uh, and it was really, really, really an adventure for a good piece of time. Good. And then finally making the rule book was the end adventure of all of it. Amazing. Uh, tell me a little bit though, because I really mean it. We don't normally think of Croatia as a game as a as a country with a big game tradition. What, what is it like, the, the gaming scene in your country? Actually, the gaming scene in Croatia goes from the 90s. It okay. started, but it not, was not very flourishing. We had a couple of conventions. I was part of the organization of the second convention in Croatia in the 98. And uh, it was going slowly, but it was more closed groups, not so much going online, not so much, especially not so much production. Okay. When you look back, a couple of years, we started with making the games. So there was uh, Martin Arcana, uh, Awaken, uh, Drinkagon. Now it's uh, Arcadia Tenebra came out. Slowly, it's really, really going at a quite okay. nice pitch. We started making our meetings with designers, having talks, blogs. So people are starting to pay attention? It's starting more and more, yeah. The, the complete scene is growing. And it's really, really an interesting scene because uh, it's um, you have to learn what to get from where. Okay. Let's say this this game is made completely in Croatia, the first edition, and uh, we don't have a production facilities. We're making these things, but not for games. And it was very very difficult to actually to learn together with the presses, with the print shops, how to make things that they don't know they, they didn't make before. So that part of the venture was great. Yeah. And uh, now slowly going to uh, abroad with production, again in uh, the Czech Republic, or the Poland, or United Kingdom. We are slowly, slowly sped, sp spreading and trying to find out what works better. That sounds really exciting. Okay, let's dive into the game because uh, we were talking earlier, you mentioned it's a game without violence, without monsters, without characters. Tell me. What, what does it have? <laughs> yes. Okay, so basically, <laughs> you as the players, yep. uh, you bring, you're defined by your profession. The professions are six to ten professions, depending if you can use the expansion. Mm -hmm. They give you perks, they give you some special idea, things, and they are not balanced. They are not balanced on purpose, okay. because it doesn't matter. It, the game auto balances itself, because if you have a mighty profession, mm -hmm. you are dangerous for everybody else. Okay. Let's say if you are an adventurer, you can get the story up really fast, which is excellent in the beginning for everybody. But in the end, if you are the traitor and the adventurer, 
and you everybody can... is screwed. Yes. Okay. So being powerful means to be one against all. Uh, there's no runaway leader here. Okay, so it, basically it pays off for the rest of the players to make sure that nobody goes too much ahead of the line. Yes, and um, the mechanic inside yeah. is uh, that it's not really hand management. You have to play one card each, each, each round. It's going really fast. The game is about one hour mm -hmm. for six players. Most of the cards are bad. So I have three bad cards in my hand. I have to play one of them. And I cannot prove to you that this is the only one I can play. Okay. So I play one insanity and I have to say, uh, sorry, but you need to get one insanity. You don't have to believe me. Okay. If I do it five times, you will definitely not believe me. <laughs> yes. But maybe, maybe, just maybe it happens. <laughs> so if you're the traitor, you have to play it really poker face. You have to be actually the nicest person on the table. I'm usually the nicest person at the table. I help everybody when I'm the traitor, mm -hmm. and then everybody suspects me and then they eliminate me. So right. it's really difficult. It actually works really fine because you have to you have to really role play it. You have to role play the innocent person. Okay. Sometimes you're not the innocent person. Uh, you sometimes you're the innocent person, but everybody thinks you're the traitor because you make some mistake or you talk too much or you are too much smart. Mm -hmm. You explain everybody everything, talking too much. Eliminate. Like I said, there's no weapons. Okay. There's no violence as such. There is elimination. So elimination is a mechanic where we have, during my round, I say, okay, I think he is a traitor. Let's start the voting. And then we vote either a vote against somebody or abstain. The thing is, if I start the vote early and I become suspicious, all of you vote against me and I'm eliminated, even though I initiated. it. Okay. It's quite tricky. The pressure is because if the game comes to the Act 5, either any storyline that comes to Act 5 is game over, and the cult is the traitor wins. No, that's how to win without eliminating everybody. Okay. Also, if the traitor remains al alone with one agent, the traitor wins because the agent is yes. okay. eliminated. But that's not said, it's not important. Okay. Um, this is a very Lovecraftian sort of game, of course, yeah. you know, with rats in the walls and everything. Um, how does it handle sanity? Because that's a very Lovecraftian typical thing. Really. There had to be yeah. insanity, yes. This is your mind sheet. This is yep. the only statistic you will have inside the game. Okay. It's a diagram of the human mind, mm -hmm. human head. And as you go, let's say any effect that tells you you get one sanity, you get one sanity at random, mm -hmm. and you place it in the point where it goes. So okay. you don't know what's going to happen. And you have a problem, but even you, do, you don't know what it is. And nothing will happen until you accumulate more. So you just begin to feel weird. And again, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. The moment you have enough cards, so let's say like this, okay. this one is the smallest number, yep. total is three, this one will activate and it will cause you to happen something. It's scrolling, you gain one more insanity, which is okay. excellent. Wow. <laughs> which is really not good for you. Mm -hmm. You get a number three, but now your insanity is four and immediately this to activate, discard okay. a hand, everybody else goes. Ooh. It uh, escalates extremely quickly. I like that. There is some game, some parties uh, where you have barely a couple of insanities here and the game finishes, everything is fine. There are some games because they go quite quickly. There are some mm -hmm. games where they go really slowly. They manipulate the game to go slowly to be on the safe side. Mm -hmm. And everybody is completely crazy by here. And until you come to Act 3, you cannot eliminate anybody. So if the cult is drives everybody crazy here, yeah. everybody, everybody might kill themselves. Because in the end, you get something like this. And it's game over for you. Okay. Uh, there is player elimination here. Mm -hmm. uh, we did really a lot of testing. In a one-hour game, the first player is eliminated about 10 minutes before the end of the game. Okay, thank God for that. There's not much, <laughs> there's not much downtime. Good. Uh, the worst, worst, worst on one convention I had one uh, lady, she was eliminated halfway through mm -hmm. because she, without any proof she started blaming anybody and uh, you know they just eliminated her because she was... She was annoying. <laughs> I didn't want to say that but yeah. Your insanity can be handled <laughs> with drugs or alcohol which helps for a while. <laughs> okay. So let's say now your insanity is three. Yeah. We made a mechanism where this lasts for two rounds. One, two, mm -hmm. and then something happens. Okay. 
And if this happens in the first act, yeah. already you can start the elimination, but nobody will take you seriously. Okay. But you don't have a choice because you're drunk. Yeah. You have to do something. Okay. Drugs are worse and they make it. Some of, some of the alcohol is not very harmful, mm -hmm. but the drugs are mostly really bad. Okay. So this is obviously a game for adults because this, this game contains yes. drugs, contains alcohol, contains mentions of suicide. So yes. this is not a game no. that you want to play at a children's no. party. No. We put, a, we put a 16 plus, okay. even, even before there were drugs and alcohol. Yeah. We don't believe that a 12 year old, except, exceptions are there, but we'll enjoy it. Okay. We don't want uh, somebody to buy this game for their 10 year old or 12 year old because it will be a boring game for them. This is um, poker, you have to do bluffing, you have to, it's not about, there's no pictures, there's no weapons, there's no rolling of dice, it will be boring for kids. Mm. And uh, just simply we don't want people to get the game that they will not enjoy. No, that's very enough, that's very enough indeed. I, I'm, I really am in love with this uh, insanity mechanism. I, I think that is really inspired and I can, you you're obviously a role player because I can see this extrapolating to role playing games. Yeah very, very neatly. So this is absolutely brilliant. Um, where can people get the game if they're interested now? Do you have international distribution already? Yes, we ship worldwide. Okay. We had just now, yesterday we finished successfully a campaign on GameFound for the expansion. Okay. The game, we are still missing some cards because we started the production and the campaign was going okay. Uh, we have, we'll have a late pledge for our game uh, in about two weeks. Okay. And we have our web shop. On the late pledge, you can get, but yeah, in about two weeks, you can get either of them on our web shop as well, mm -hmm. or on the game phone, whichever you prefer, whichever is better for you. We started doing a little bit with the woodworks also, so we are starting making some limited editions. I saw that, that looks absolutely gorgeous. Because we enjoy, actually, actually enjoy, I enjoy making things from wood. So this is the limited edition, but it's sold out already. I bet. And uh, each game has some wooden components inside that we make ourselves. Wow. Because, um, we are, we are trying to avoid some plastic as much as we can. Yeah. You cannot avoid it on the box, on the cards, but we did avoid it on some things. So, plus, I really enjoy working with lasers, so <laughs> it's a win-win. So, we are trying, trying a little bit to see what works better, what people like, what people enjoy. So far, we had a fantastic feedback on the first one. Mm -hmm. We had, of course, a lot of constructive criticism as well. We just published a new rulebook for this one, yeah. because the rulebook uh, last year was too complicated okay. and this year we made a new book and we shipped it for free for anybody who bought the game. That's Where, very good. I said there is free to download as well. We have it on the, what's the name of the platform, Tabletop Simulator, mm -hmm. but not the expansion yet. Okay. But we decided since um, we wanted everybody to enjoy the game, we decided to anybody who bought the game will get a new book for free, hard copy or digital, whatever they prefer. Mm -hmm. And we are trying to spread a little bit to the German market. We made a German rulebook now. Okay. We are going from French, Italian, Croatian, of course. Okay. <laughs> we are trying to simplify the rulebooks because that is one of the biggest challenges. Yes, it always is. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an instructional designer and I know how hard it is to write rules. It's, it's really this process is one of the most complicated things about board game design. And one of the things that most people completely ignore and forget about until the very yeah. end. It's very easy to do that. The first one look, looks really good, but then when we get some really a lot of play testing on the conventions, on the Comic Cons and stuff like this, we just decided people okay. Just wouldn't be able to uh, people who took the time to comprehend it yeah. really enjoyed it. But it was off putting in the beginning. Yeah. And that's sad. Because uh, of course if you just take a rule book and what? You just that's yeah. why the rule book for the expansion is this. That's it. Oh, okay, that's... That's the addition to the expansion, that's it. Examples... Done. Basic, nothing more. That's good. Trying to make it as simple as possible, because we don't want people uh, to keep reading the rules. Okay. That's why you see the rules on the cards. Yeah. That was inspired by Magic the Gathering, yeah. which I played way oh, back. Bad. <laughs> but I wanted to make it a little bit simpler. If you want to play something, read it here. Yeah, that's, that's very good. So. Okay, this is, the production of the expansion is out of the way, selling like hotcakes. So what, what's next for Interhuman? What, what are you going to be doing? We we'll have the planned, but it's work in progress name. Mm -hmm. It's uh, within Walls of Ice. Yeah. 
again, it's Lovecraft inspired, it's Mountains of Madness, it's uh, The Thing, the movie. Let's say it's a rescue mission, we will still remove some of the items because they were not, uh, we want to try something new, mm -hmm. we want to make it a little bit more fluid. But again, it's a social reduction game, okay. and uh, there is a traitor, and uh, we, really, we, we will keep the spying mechanism because we are really, really happy about the spying mechanism. Yeah. It's uh, not deterministic, it can be mis misleading, it's uh, rolling a hidden die for the dungeon master. Because if you roll your die, you know you were right or no. If, mm -hmm. if you roll behind, you don't know. Yeah. And this was the point we wanted, that you are quite sure, but not sure completely. So we, okay, will, sounds, we will keep that one. That sounds excellent. So now we, know we have something else to look forward to next year. And as you can see, plenty of things to look forward to this game because it, it feels absolutely amazing. Uh, if you have any questions or you have any comments, please do leave them in, in the uh, comment section of the video and we'll be happy to do our best to answer them for you. Uh, but meanwhile, Daniel, thank you very much indeed. That looks absolutely amazing. Thank you very much. Really Over to you.